In the previous video, I talked about Binance Smart Chain, which is a great alternative to Ethereum. You could even consider it as a, an Ethereum sidechain, uh, which is helping to offload some transactions and activity so that Ethereum can function uh, better and you could have cheaper fees. Now, in this video, I wanted to talk about two other uh, blockchain platforms that could be maybe good alternatives to Ethereum, maybe right now or in the future. Because, well, even though Binance Smart Chain is a good alternative, it's not fully decentralized. And these two alternatives, uh, well, they are planning to be decentralized. So these are Polkadot and Cardano uh, that are at the top of the rankings. And what interesting stuff are they bringing to the table and why would they gain a piece of the decentralized application pie? So Polkadot, what is Polkadot? It is created by a Ethereum co-founder, Gavin Wood. Uh, what's interesting about it is well, it has a relay network, basically the main blockchain, and then you have a lot of small side chains or as they call parachains where you can place different applications and an application can have a specific parachain uh, that maybe has some specific functionality and all the computations are happening on these parachains and then the crucial hashes are then saved to the main blockchain and in this way they are able to scale up pretty quickly uh, they don't congest the main network because we have a lot of side chains and this is their model uh, that allows, uh, I guess, uh, the Gavin Wood tweeted that right now they are able to do 1000 transactions per second, which is awesome. And the more sidechains uh, adding up, they will be able to do up to a million transactions per second, which is quite amazing and much better than Ethereum. Now, what else? they will probably have much lower fees uh, if they can do so many transactions uh, though fees usually change when the price of the asset goes up so with adoption it might change and with adoption a lot of things changes and they usually don't end up like predicted so that's a metric for speculation i guess what else Polkadot is also proof of stake. You don't need to run any mining and you can earn up to 14% yearly interest on your Polkadot coins, which is hell of amazing, which is a lot of interest. So that's good. They're not polluting the environment. They're doing staking. What else? Well, let's talk about their ecosystem. They have a pretty decent ecosystem compared to other blockchain platforms right now. There's several projects in the top 100, like the Energy Web Token that does energy markets on a blockchain platform. It's usually in the top 100. Also Kusama, which well, is the sandbox platform for Polkadot, where new improvements are being added before they go to Polkadot. So that's what's happening with Polkadot. The ecosystem is not that great, but it keeps on growing. Next, Cardano. It's created by another Ethereum co-founder, Charles Hoskinson. Uh, what's interesting about Cardano is that they rely on research papers. They write a research paper, they, it gets peer-reviewed. If everything is cheeky, then it gets implemented into the main blockchain. And right now, they can do plenty of transactions per second, just like Polkadot. Uh, they are working on decentralizing and adding more nodes. Uh, their goal is to have at least 1000 nodes, which would be quite decent decentralization. Uh, if you take into consideration that Bitcoin mining is all, con is all grouped up into pools and there's like 10 pools or something. Uh, which could arguably say that's like 10 nodes. Uh, so yeah, 
Cardano is trying to beat that and have a lot of nodes, a lot of transactions per second. They have a very similar network where the main layer, layer of the blockchain is where you transfer the token, the main token of the blockchain, which is ADA, and you do the transactions. Uh, it's kind of similar to Binance, where you have Binance Chain and Binance Smart Chain, a dual blockchain system. And again, in Cardano, you have that second layer where you do the computations. Again, it is also proof of stake. You get 4.3% per year of interest, which is much lower, still kind of decent in the grand scheme of things. And yeah, how about the ecosystem? Well, they just recently launched smart contract functionality in their testnet. So this means that there is no ecosystem, though it is right now the third largest asset, I guess, which is kind of crazy, as you can hope uh, to get a product and just promote new hopium to people and they just keep buying even though there's not much underlying platform over there. So, but in the future, it might be good, though it is going very slowly. They started thinking about Cardano in 2015, then they launched their mainnet in 2017, and now in 2021, only in their testnet, they launched their uh, smart contracts. So it's pretty slow. Uh, I guess it's because of this academic rigor where you need to peer review all these research papers. Uh, and usually businesses are much faster than academia. They find out what's new, implement it and profit from it. So I think something similar could happen to Cardano if, they're, if they research something amazing. Other blockchains would implement it and use it. So yeah, and if we were to compare this to Ethereum, is it really that great? Well, proof of stake is good, but Ethereum 2.0 is going to have it, which is going to come in a year or two. Polkadot ecosystem is very small, Cardano non-existent at all, so it's hard to compare it at all, but at least Polkadot is growing. And yeah, can they outcompete Ethereum? In my opinion, I really doubt it. Ethereum is not really in any danger right now. Maybe just by the price, as people speculate. And sometimes it feels that they want to uh, value other assets even more than Ethereum, even though there is no good reason for that. For example, EOS, it already has fast transactions, cheap transactions, but it has been for over two years launched, I think. And the ecosystem didn't really catch up. There was no network effect. And is Cardano or Polkadot better than EOS? We'll see. I wouldn't really bet on that. Ethereum is still number one. Binance Smart Chain is not truly decentralized, so it's kind of sucky, but it's very close to Ethereum. It's really like a sidechain, and that's why I like it a little bit more. Uh, but when we will have a bull market, the problem of high Ethereum fees will disappear. Everyone will be happy with Ethereum once again. And in a bull market, in a bear market, excuse me, uh, there will be much less development happening, much less money. Uh, all these projects won't get any funding and ecosystems of blockchain start to disappear and we will be left with Ethereum. That's pretty much my prediction. Unless we will have a very, very long bull market and Polkadot maybe catches up with more and more projects. Right now it doesn't seem like it. But that's what's happening. So this is it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.